Welcome back everyone. We are here live in Chicago for KubeCon, CNCF. I'm John Furrier, your host, Rob Strecce, Savannah Peterson, bringing out all the action in the cloud native world. We've got a great segment here with IBM and a customer, practitioner, because this show's got all the companies here, startups, practitioners, customers, users. It's a great show, cloud native is the future. We got Shailesh Chinoy, Assistant Dean of Information Technology at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Scott. Also the CIO, basically. Yes. Academic title. Yes. And Peter Bray, Pete Bray, Global Product Executive at IBM. Great to have you back. Yeah. Quite a run on theCUBE. This is like your yeah. fifth appearance in the past couple months. Yeah. Things are hot. Welcome, welcome back. Yeah, thanks. It's great to be here. So guys, we've got the customer situation here. What's interesting is, is that you got young guns coming in in the marketplace, no new talent, entrepreneurs, developers, uh, big projects, companies, end user customers all together sharing. I mean, it's the perfect storm around this cloud native next gen. It's legit with AI too, it's all going down. This is a hot part of what your story is. Yeah, yeah, and it's really interesting to see the, the maturity level, you know, as we were in Amsterdam, you know, not that long ago, yeah. and seeing them, you know, the, the things that were at top of mind for everyone then, and now, today, and just like, it feels like we're on warp speed, kind of, um, you know, with the things that are happening, you know, the whole concept of the platform and the platform engineering teams, yeah. and, you know, delivering these services, you know, the, the, the whole concept, what Kubernetes started with originally was, you know, being able to deliver the infrastructure services that people need to be productive. You know, one of the things that's been on theCUBE the past couple months has been with AI, more data is coming in. Again, we've seen this movie before, it's been happening since you know, the big data 12, 13 years ago, <laughs> but the budgets aren't going up. Right. <laughs> more data is coming in, more skills are needed, the budgets aren't rising just as fast, the cybersecurity threats are, are there as well, so you got to use the code. And the new AI tools are an opportunity on how things are stored, what do you do with the data, what are you experiencing with this wave, what's the, what's the mindset over there? Well certainly, I mean, that's a big part that's driving this, right? I mean, we have a, a major inflection point that's going on right now and how it is that we can leverage this technology. But I just want to point out in academic research, we have a special challenge, which is the ability to manage and share the data that are generated, you know, the intellectual property is generated, but we're an institution that's largely funded by the National Institutes of Health, and there's an expectation, yeah. and in fact, we have to comply with rules that say, make your data shareable. And that includes the computational code that we have. So portability is important, and the promise of containers has existed for a while, but it's now that the platform exists in a way that we can leverage and easily, and I feel like it's a responsibility that we have as technology leaders to make this available and to, and to really, it's about institutional change. <laughs> so what I envision is that in the research community, particularly the academic research community, is that every researcher will have a container the moment they walk into the institution. And then they'll use that as a way to share what they're doing with the community. Yeah, and I, I think because we've been talking about this, John and I have been talking about it, we were talking with you about it several times this year, that it's that platform engineering aspect of it, and how do you simplify your entire stack so that you can do more with the same people, is pretty much it. And, and also, ultimately, for our clients who are the researchers, I can't let the IT department get in the way. Right, and the fact is, they need responsiveness. They need to be able to do this. I mean, so, it's like working in an artist community, right? I mean, the yeah. idea is that inspiration can happen at any time. Yeah. Yeah. And so, the idea that we'd have to engineer a solution and then give it to them, uh, those days are, are long gone. I mean, the moment that someone gets an NIH grant, they're applying for a new one. And you know, the other thing that's been observing too is the speed. The game is so faster now, yeah. you got to enable with the platform engineering for devs and users. By the way, the developers are becoming the users too. That's right. right? right. So you have That's a whole right. democratization wave happening yes. on discovery and the innovations, not just a department. It exactly. could be anyone at use at any time. Talk about the speed and how that challenges you because you got to run faster. The game is, the pace of play now is so fast. How does that, how does that alter your world? Well, for us, what it comes down to is, you know, once again, for the platform, so the, the solution that we chose is kind of turnkey, essentially. So we're running OpenShift in IBM Fusion, HCI. So that hyper-converged environment allows us to basically bring in the technology quickly, deploy it quickly, and then be able to maintain it very easily. 
I mean, otherwise we're stuck, right? We can't work at the pace of innovation if we don't do it this way. And I think that's really something that's changed in the, in the world of uh, open shifts and containers. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I find it the most exciting time I've seen in a long, long time, maybe in my career, where you got the perfect storm of innovation and leverage of existing legacy or pre-existing condition resources, like right. data. Like, the data value that people are getting out of the, either their exhaust or pre-data that they can now enable with better software, yeah. it changes the game. So if you have good storage practices or good hygiene or any kind of hygiene, AI is going to come in and take unstructured data, structured data, and actually turn it into, into gold. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the big things on the enterprise side is that this is saying, well, I got value in my data I didn't know I had. It's unlocking a lot more. Right, and it, you know, I was talking about it, data as a revenueable asset. You know, how do you extract that value out of the data? And you're absolutely right, it does come back to the speed and the velocity, you know, with which you're able to understand and interpret that data, and there's just volumes and volumes that are coming at you. And you know, the good news is, there's a lot of new technology that is helping us with this and being able to deal with these problems. Yeah, and I, I think one of the themes from this morning's keynote was, okay, you know, Kubernetes is here. And it's, I, I think, you know, we've been talking about it, is it coming, how mature has it gotten, how easy has it gotten? I, I mean, I, I see it as more like, how does it become enterprise? How, yeah. do, how does it become, you know, the thing in the enterprise? What are you seeing from, your, like, customers like, Albert Einstein and others. Yeah, and it's really interesting in the conversations that Shailesh and I have had around you know, that, that innovative moment you know, that his researchers are having and you don't want to take that away from them. You want to you know, have the free flow of tools and, and the technology to be able to help them. Um, and so we're seeing in a lot of the things that we've talked about around some of the critical data services, you know, ensuring the resilience of the data. You know, what happens if somebody accidentally deletes you know, volumes of data, how do they get that back very quickly? And so there's a wide range of solutions that his team is actually going to be using to deliver that resilience that they need. Things like backup and recovery, which you might think is a very basic thing, but when you start thinking about it in a Kubernetes context, there's some things that you really need to think about. Same thing with doing multi-site disaster, and it's what's really interesting to see they're doing right now is using multiple sites to deliver the resilience that they need for their researchers. It's really fundamental to the way that we deliver the service, right? First, high availability essential, of course, right? Absolutely have to have that, that always on environment. It's not just a need in enterprise, right? It's also in the academic environment. That's the demand that people have. And then, of course, this ability to back up and to provide us with some disaster recovery relief. Not because there's going to be a hurricane or an earthquake, but because there's going to be a cyber attack. And we have to be able to protect and preserve our intellectual property. I mean, you got to grab I me, mean, it's a tough job. I mean, modernizing IT, that transformation journey has been going on for a while. Now with the cybersecurity threat, the threat vectors are increasing. Not just the data protection side, you got, I mean, you got two things going on there. Yeah. You got data protection challenges, yeah. and yeah. then you got the threats, yeah. okay, <laughs> coming and, at you. And, and this is in an academic environment, right? Where the whole tradition of an academic environment is openness, right? right? So the antithesis of openness is cybersecurity, right? So we have to somehow keep this environment secure which takes extra measures, right? Yeah. And, and it's regulated as well. It's Absolutely. Not, it, I right. mean, again, you start to look at the data protection and all the laws and everything like that. Yeah. It has to be just, you have to be able to be, have a rock solid platform yeah. to be able to go and do that. This is why there's an inflection point now in the technology, yeah. right? And so before these become, before, before fusion, frankly, I would not have considered taking this direction as, as yeah. attractive as it is conceptually. Yeah. It's not sustainable. Yeah. unless you have this type of a platform and this type of ecosystem. You know, I think, and with um, not just data protection, and we've seen this in the cyber security conversations where the compliance and governance is so important. AI actually could be a great win here to do yes. all the reports, the paperwork. Yeah. yeah. When is the moment of truth? If you do have a breach, when did it start? You got to find the data. So the, the, the data hygiene, we think, uh, based on the CUBE research team's view, this is going to be an ongoing, elevated conversation. Not just classic data management, data hygiene as an ongoing, always on concept. Correct. Both technology and management chops. I mean, do you see that same thing? Absolutely, and then, I mean, just think about automated playbooks now. 
Right, all of that, I was just like in, in the classic cybersecurity, yeah. that's a sore. <laughs> but now expand that beyond yeah, to yeah. just the way that you maintain your environment, the way that you meet the needs of your community, right? Yeah. That's what it's about. Pete, you got that product executive over there at IBM. One of the things that you must have on your radar, I'd love to get your reaction to if you can, uh, if it's not too confidential. Data engineering is coming up to be quite the new discipline coming out of platform engineering. Yeah. Where pipelines are exploding in value, more are coming online. Yeah. You mentioned automated playbooks, run books, whatever you want to call it. This, you, got, you now have best practices that could be scaled automatically with AI. So imagine yeah. having a playbook yeah. just run yeah. generate the playbook based on certain conditions. That's on your radar, is that on your radar? Yeah, yeah, and we have this concept that we talk about called data pipelines, and it's like a very modular way to be able to put containers together and to be able to put you know, this open source code together to answer a lot of the questions that they're trying to ask of their data. Um, and then you know, taking the, the cybersecurity concept even a little bit further, you're absolutely right. You know, applying AI in that world is, is absolutely what you want to be doing because it's really about you know, time to detection is really critical. How fast can I detect that that ransomware attack is happening? But it's also then time to recover. How fast can I recover and how fast can I get back to what we at IBM, we call it the minimum viable company. You know, what's the minimum you need to be up and running as quickly as possible? You know, one of the things that we've observed as, as even a small business compared to the mission you guys have and obviously how big at IBM is, we discovered that we have value in our data by storing it and um, we kind of had an instinct, but then when AI came out, we actually realized it. So, you know, we're back to storage yeah. again. Yeah. AI is making everything better. We're back to cybersecurity and IT, information technology, managing. We're going to bring back data processing uh, word back to, yeah. remember the old days? <laughs> yeah. no, but we're back into data again, at large scale, high velocity, intelligent. Yep. I mean, almost AI, the timing of generative AI was almost perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I mean, don't you think this is what unlocks all the potential that exists there? Yeah, yeah. Right, I mean, yeah. you can really tap into this now, and I think that that's really pretty remarkable. And, and I would assume, as a research institution, you're bringing in new techniques and new types of applications, and you need something that's a more modern platform to really take that in. That innovation is really very critical, there's no doubt about it. But I mean, we still have some human element that's involved yeah. in this, right? And part of that is just the harmonization of metadata, because still within the same discipline, people call the same thing different by different terms. So that ability to harmonize or have AI be able to understand yeah. that is going to be critical for us to unlock yeah. As we always say in the cube, human plus AI is better than AI. So AI is great, but you add the humans to it. Yeah. You know, just in scales intellectual capital, scales ideas, scales data. Well ultimately, there's no replacement for human curiosity. Yeah. But you can't, that's not artificial. Yeah. So that curiosity is yeah. what drives a research institution yeah. and that's not going to go away. And I love that conversation around how you're enabling creativity. Yeah. That could come from anywhere, and certainly in medicine, we need a lot more breakthroughs, a lot of problems being solved now that you couldn't get to beat before. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool to see, you know, it's a, it's a bit of the collision of you know, organizations and culture and the way we've always done things, and then you bring in technology, and to get the benefit, the real benefit of the technology, you kind of have to rethink the organization and the culture and marry the two together, so it's really important to remember that. Pete Chilas, thanks for coming on theCUBE. In the last uh, minute we have left, talk about the relationship, the partnership between you guys. Uh, what's it about? Give it a quick plug for what you guys are doing together. Well, like I gotta say, like, you have great ideas. You can bring the resources to the table, but without the right partners, and the right partnerships and really world-class service, you really can't get to do anything. And that's what it comes down to. That's one of the things I want to appreciate is the relationship with IBM and Red Hat. It's been really fantastic for us. Yeah, absolutely. Pete, thanks for coming on, guys. Appreciate your time. Thank you so Breaking much. Breaking down appreciate the barriers to innovation, creativity, innovation, all happened here in theCUBE in Chicago for KubeCon. We'll be back with more coverage. I'm John Furrier, Rob Stretch, and Savannah Peterson after this short break. Stay with us.